Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is John. I'm a cinematographer located out of Charleston, South Carolina. Today we're going to be talking about the Iviscope 1.5 stretch anamorphic adapter. Now I'm not going to go into great detail about this adapter as there are a few videos already out there and they're absolutely great. They're, they're what turned me on to this adapter as a matter of fact. Um, and I will place those, um, the links in the description below. But I'm going to be talking about um, uh, a little bit about the pros and cons about this. Um, I'm also going to be talking about my experience with it and um, is it worth it? So uh, let's talk about pros and cons. The pros, um, I'll just go ahead and get that uh, out of the way, is that it is for this uh, adapter, it is pretty tack sharp. Um, that is difficult to find. Um, when it comes to these adapters or anything anamorphic. Um, now that might turn you off because you like that softer film it look. Well, this is just an adapter, remember? So you can take an older taking lens like this Super Tecumar, uh 1.4, adapt it on there, and now you have that soft look while not degrading the image from that because now you have extra glass going on the front. Um, so yeah, huge, huge pro, um, and is really the reason why I went with this. Um, a lot of the other ones out there were just not very sharp that I've seen. It was too soft, um, and I think there's a fine line between that. You can get artistic and go really soft, but I like I like kind of in the in the mid in the middle. Um, a lot of times I will use a pro mist filter to get that look. But anyway, um, the other pro is that it's a 1.5 stretch. Uh, you know, co uh, it's real popular for the two times stretch, and to me, that's just too much. Um, Vazen has their, I believe it's like 1.8 stretch, and um, then Surrey or Surrey is like 1.33. Now, that is a lens, um, but SLR Magic makes an adapter that is 1.33 as well. So yeah, 1.5 to me is perfect. I believe on a full frame sensor, you get about an aspect ratio of 1.41 to one, um, which is pretty much CinemaScope. So that to me is like the perfect um, stretch. So, uh, that's two pros. Number three is this is the amber flare and it is just beautiful the way that it flares um, into the sun and off of lights. It's just, it's, you know, pretty magical, I guess you would say. Um, <laughs> and whenever you put that on with something like the Super Tecmar, it's, it's, um, man, I just love the way it looks. So overall, it's all about what you're, the image you're able to produce by put, putting this on the taking lens. Um, so if you have a really good taking lens, you put this on there, it's gonna be beautiful. Um, so those are the pro pros. That was enough to get me to buy this. Um, so now when I talk about the cons, this might scare you away. And honestly, if I heard all these cons first, it probably, it probably would've scared me away. I probably wouldn't have, have bought it. So the first con is, the first thing that I noticed was this, um, the first con I noticed was the lens. I don't know if it's the lens itself or the coating. It's like a hard plastic. So I feel like you can scratch it easy or ding it or something and it would almost render this lens useless. Um, now, I, I'm actually gonna send them a message to figure this out and see if it's actually the glass or a coating. So what I did was, Again, you're putting another piece of glass on here to protect it. You don't want to degrade it. If you spent $3,000 on an adapter like this, go ahead and get your really good um, UV cut filter. So I bought the Nisi Nano Pro or the Pro Nano, uh, the UV cut 395. I did a lot of research. This is perfect for this. Um, it does not degrade the image and it's a UV cut, so it's great um, for outdoors. What was weird about this is it comes with an 82 millimeter um, threaded uh, lens cap, 
Well, the stock one doesn't work on this filter. I mean, I tried multiple times to, to get it to work. It just does not it does not work. Um, I feel like I'm gonna cross thread it. So I, I don't know if that's a quality control thing or, or what, but um, so I had to buy one from Amazon uh, to use on the front. Um, and I like the way that it threads on there. I feel, I feel really secure with all the metal already on there. Um, speaking of quality control, so this was number two and these two are huge okay these are these two are really big cons so the glass and then listen okay i'm sure you've heard that you heard that so the one of the the earlier models had a um, light spring helicoid in here so this front part when it was fully extended it would move. It would actually bend up and down. And um, Ivascope said they were going to fix that, which they did. But with that, I don't know if the ones before made this sound, but I started doing some investigation by just looking in here. And it looks like however they cut this or milled it, it was done very poorly. Um, I can see... I've worked most of it out, but I can see like pieces of metal shaving in there and it looks super jagged. Um, it look like, looks like someone took a file and just filed in different directions on this thing. I'm not joking. Um, I'll try to get a little shot in there and see if I can get that. Okay. Um, those are two pretty good uh, cons. Um, so, so with that, I don't think this is worth three thousand dollars i um you know bravo to them to getting people like me to buy it at that price but um yeah i don't think it's worth that especially when you have um other adapters that are much cheaper it is a middle point though between an adapter and um i think it's like isco or something like that which is real popular um building out those anamorphic lens um, but that can get up to like $5,000. So I think this is a good in, in the middle. Um, and the third con is the lens support that they send you is, is kind of a joke. I don't even think I got the screws to go in to connect these together. But anyway, um, it's non-adjustable um, unless you, your whole rail system adjusts up and down. Um, and then the filter that goes in the back um, that connects to your taking lens, you have to take that off and then you've got to thread it on here and then lock it down on here. Um, and what's odd is they give you metal screws for this and for the um, taking adapter, uh, they give you nylon screws, which I think is great. Um, they feel pretty robust. Um, you don't have to you don't have to lock it down too hard and uh, you can just you can basically lock it down and then back it up like maybe like I don't know like a quarter of a turn and it you'll be able to adjust it to get your horizon right okay so uh, that's the pros and cons um, now I'm gonna show you like how I adapt it um, which I personally think this is the best way. So you're going to take this back, uh, cap off. I use, um, on every single one of my lenses, I have Sin Mod Cine Rings. Okay. These are the 80 millimeter diameters, which have 77 millimeter threads on the inside. This one has a one, one and a half inch extender, which I love on this lens because it's so small. So what I highly suggest is put those rings on all of your um, lenses that you're gonna use it on, and then buy one step down ring. So the, the rear filter of this is a 52. So this is a step down from a 77 to a 52. And then you can screw it on like that. 
undo your screws, line up everything. I just use my cell phone and get the um, the anamorphic flare completely um, horizontal with um, with my grid on my uh, on my monitor, and then I know that I'm even. <clears throat> um, corner to corner sharpness is is great um, as long as you have a taking lens that has good corner to corner sharpness. So yeah, you know, this looks kind of like a uh, the Sigma 18 to 35 right here. It's about the same. It's probably a little bit heavier. I don't know. I've never had that lens. Some people might think I'm crazy, but I don't really like the look of that lens. Um, but yeah, and, and that's how... So with that, uh, I use a small rig lens support, and I put it on that extender right there. Um and that's how I support my lens. If I'm not using the extender um, and just use, you know, like this is a, this is a Zeiss Classic. This is the old, the Planar 51.4. This is the ZF. Um, and yeah, I'll just hold it. Like, so that's, this is kind of like my, you know, these are kind of like my running gun type stuff. And it really isn't, it isn't really crazy heavy. Um, I also have the Cine Lock mount on my pocket 4k and uh i have the ev adapter um and then on my uh, ursa mini pro i have it's just ef so <clears throat> i don't feel like it's gonna break um, at all so anyway is it worth it yeah i would say it i would say it's worth it i would say it's worth buying one <clears throat> Make sure if you want blue flares to get the blue flares, amber flares, just make sure the one that you want is the one that you want. Um, because unless you have the money to buy a couple of them, go for it. Buy as many as you want. But um, I'm glad I went with the amber one. I'm, I'm extremely happy. And uh, yeah, I would highly recommend it. So I'm going to show you a couple things that I shot with it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And... Hopefully, um, you will go out and grab you one of these. Thank you. It's been almost two weeks since I last saw one. One. I talk as if they're no longer human. Luckily, we still have electricity and running water. This new house is actually kind of nice. It reminds me a lot of ours. The crazy thing is that it looks untouched, like the family actually left without force. I know I can't get too attached to it though. They'll be here soon. There is harm, then you shall pay life for life, eye for eye.